In this video, I'll be introducing the smooth manifold chart lemma and some more examples of smooth manifolds. Okay, so some examples of smooth manifolds are all the ones I mentioned previously, except for the first one I introduced, which was the graph of a continuous function. You just have to make it the graph of a smooth function. So let me write this out. So basically what we have is the sphere, the graph of a smooth function, the real projective space, real vector spaces, real matrices, and linear functions between two real vector spaces. And we also have the product of smooth manifolds is smooth. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you another example. Except this example doesn't inherently have a topology on it. There's no way I can just say, yeah, that's the topology. But the next example, what we have to do is construct a topology specifically meant for being a smooth manifold. And so the theorem that goes along with this is where we start off with maps and sets. What we do is we construct a topology such that those sets are open and those maps are smooth or uh, they have um, smooth chart transition maps. So say we have the set of u alpha and phi alpha for alpha and j. Okay, so this is just a collection of sets and uh, maps. And let me say this, for u alpha a subset of m. M right here doesn't have a topology, so there's no notion of openness. So this is just a subset. And phi alpha here is going to be mapped from u alpha down to r n. Okay, this acts as my chart maps, and this acts as my open set. Okay, so the first condition I'm going to have here is that because we want phi alpha to be a homeomorphism, what we have to do is require that phi alpha from u alpha into phi alpha of u alpha is bijective. And what I'm also going to consider is that phi alpha u alpha is going to be open. That's what I'm going to require. Phi alpha u alpha is open. So this acts as a chart. It's a bijective map that takes you from an open set into an open set of Rn. And so, can we just leave it at that? Obviously not, because there's another property of homeomorphisms that we have to deal with. If u alpha and u beta are open sets, their intersection is an open set. So then I also have to require that phi alpha of the intersection has to be open due to the fact we want it to be a homeomorphism. So for any alpha, beta, and element of j, this index set, phi alpha of u alpha intersect u beta has to be open in Rn. Okay, that's just requiring that the intersection of any two open sets is open. This is so that we can have a good topology, an actual topology, and to have phi alpha be homeomorphic. Three. For alpha and beta an element of j, phi alpha composed phi beta inverse is smooth. Because remember here, phi alpha composed phi beta inverse is the chart transition map, and as we've looked at that, that's from Rn to Rn. We're just making sure that this is a smooth manifold, that these are smooth charts. Okay, so four is that it has a countable basis, practically is what it means, is that there exists a countable collection of u alpha i from i equals 1 to infinity. Okay, this is just a countable collection of these sets that cover m. Basically meaning countably many of these open sets cover the space m, or the set m. Right now it's a set, we'll make it into topological space afterwards. Okay, number five is the Hausdorff condition, except we have to make it a little different. So for every p and q, an element of m, either p and q are, the, are in the same exact 
open set, or P is going to be an element of U alpha, Q is going to be an element of U beta, and U alpha intersect U beta has to be empty. Basically meaning either they're in the same open set or they're in two different disjoint ones. And this is the Hausdorff condition, basically. Then there exists a unique smooth structure on M such that U alpha, phi alpha are smooth charts. So what did I do here? Well, I just made a list of things that need to be true in order for this collection of what we want to be smooth charts for there to be a unique structure on M such that those are smooth charts. So we just took what we want our structure to be and we made that our structure. The proof here is really easy. It's all spelled out right here, okay? What you all, all you have to do is construct the topology on M and then prove that those are smooth charts and then you're good. I'll leave that proof to you. If you want to answer, leave your answers in the comments below. So now what's an example where we can use this? It's going to be G K of V. Now this is going to be the V here is a real vector space. Okay, and GK of V is the set of um, K dimensional linear subsets. If you remember the real projective space, this was the set of one dimensional subspaces of Rn plus 1, or in other words, it's G1 of Rn plus 1. This is an extension of the real projective space, except now we're going to give it a topology using this method. So what are the maps and sets we're going to use? Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be a one heck of a ride. Let's P and Q be subspaces of a V with dimension K and N minus K. Here K is that in the Grassmannian n minus k, n right here is the dimension of the vector space. k here is the dimension of p, n minus k is the dimension of q, so I just put respectively. And then we also have the property that v is going to be the direct product, the direct sum between p and q. Basically meaning every element of v can be expressed as the sum of two elements of p and q. So, for example, R2 is going to be equal to the span of 0, 1, direct product, the span of 1, 0, right? Because every single element of R2 can be expressed as a sum of some element in this and some element in that. These are what are called complementary spaces. Okay, then what we'll do is we'll say that x, a map from p to q, will give it what's called its graph, gamma of x, and it's going to be equal to the set of v, v plus x apply to v for v an element of p. Now guess what? This intersection with q is going to be trivial because right there we have a v which is an element of P translating it out of Q because they're complementary. So its intersection with Q is going to be trivial. It's just going to be zero. Okay, well now let's go ahead and do the opposite of this. Let's say some S has a trivial intersection with Q. Okay, let's say this is any linear subspace of V and its intersection with Q is zero. How about we show that this is equal to the graph of some linear map x from p to q? Well, what you look at is going to be, because v is going to be the direct sum between these two spaces, I can have a map pi p from v down to p and pi q from v down to q using its sum representation, right? 
So we send some vector in V down to its component in P, and we send some vector uh, in V down to its vector uh, component in Q. So for instance, if I had my previous example where P was the span of 0, 1, and Q was the span of 1, 0, um, pi of the span 0, 1 of, say, 2, 3 is going to be equal to the vector um, 0, 3. Because in its direct sum representation, of some element of this plus some element of uh, span 1, 0. Okay, so 2, 3 is equal to 0, 3 plus 2, 0. Now both of these, this is in this, and this is in this. So that its, its component under P, that's what these maps are. And then what we look at is a map x equal to pi q restricted to s composed pi p restricted to s inverse. This is a map from p to q because that takes you from v to p. So that's going to take you from p to v and then v down to q via that one. It's quite easy to check that then gamma of x is equal to s. So now, let's use this to our advantage. So let's let uq be the set of s such that q intersect s is trivial. So this is the set of trivial intersecting linear subspaces. And then the map gamma is going to be a map that takes you from all of the linear from the linear space between p and q and it'll take you into uq and by this the fact that any x corresponds with a graph and any graph corresponds with an s this is bijective then what we'll do is we'll take gamma inverse and I'll call this phi and this will be from uq down to lpq which if you look at my previous video on um, examples so my examples of manifolds 2 this can easily be identified with r of the dimensions multiplied with each other so this is going to be k times n minus k because the linear space right here, those correspond with matrices, and then those matrices correspond with real numbers. So therefore, we'll have the pair of uq and gamma inverse be these maps. All we have to do is check all of these things are true. Okay, but one is obviously satisfied for these, but the rest of them aren't so easy. We just use this to construct a smooth manifold structure uh, using this theorem. It's um, very difficult to prove. Uh, I tried to prove it, but it was too hard to fit into this one video. Maybe I'll do a special where I prove it or a live stream where I prove it, but <laughs> not right now. Not in this video at least. Oh, okay.